Welcome back to The Way It Is. We're discussing education reforms in the country with Interior CS and now Acting Education CS of Fred Matiangi faulting Kenya's education system, especially in higher learning, saying it is too intellectual. We're in studio for this conversation is education expert uh, Dr. Wendy Enjoya and Oliver Kipchumba, who is a lawyer and an analyst. Before we went on break, we're discussing issues of funding. Um, let me come to you, Oliver. We just saw uh, a lecturer's strike, which has since been averted. We are hearing talks of another um, lecturer strike still in the offing. Issues of remuneration for lecturers uh, have been a problem for quite a long time. Um, we are hearing the ministry now speak of um, a university fund uh, body that uh, will just will deal solely with funding universities. Might this be the solution to the looming lecture strike? I think that that might be among other things that will solve the problem. Mm -hmm. But we need to understand and to appreciate the fact that all universities and all tertiary institutions, they are supposed to be research-based, not to be purely on lecturing on notes. Because mm -hmm. we need to see innovative ideas being churned out of these universities. And if you look keenly at the structure of any other university, you must see a DVC in charge of research and extension, which tells you that research is a core part of any higher learning system. And a country that invests in research will mean that we'll come up with innovative ways to move forward. And that's why we need to gear our learning system towards Vision 2030, is through this research and everything. Research cannot be done without funding. Whether the government funds it or from donors or from any other place, mm -hmm. we need to rethink on the issue of funding. And it is, uh, it is, also, it is also surprising that most, time, most of the times we hear of lecturer strikes, some, of issue, some issues like, like research and issues of funding have not been coming out. We have only been hearing of CBA issues of uh, increase in pay. We need now to move the entire discussion if we must change quality to what, what are we doing in terms of research, even as we fund education, how much is going to fund research? Right. Are we funding also our lecturers to improve their skills? This will, by improving the skills of the lecturers, we improve the entire class mm -hmm. or the entire education system mm -hmm. because the person who will be bringing about knowledge will have something to deliver and will be, will be trained on the new skills. I think that is what we need to invest more. Right. We might have the education fund, but if we are not dealing with the issue of funding research and enabling our lecturers to go back and get something or learn something new, innovative ways, are, things are changing each day, mm -hmm. and our lecturers should be on top of the game. Mm -hmm. So I think funding will be good if it is geared towards changing the quality of education. No, to, it should be seen from a, a multifaceted dimension. All right. Um, and of course, funding and the management of funds uh, would go hand in hand, Dr. Wandia. Uh, Matengi talks of a centralized management of university funds through the University Funding Board, UFB. Is this a solution to the lecturer's problem? Um, I think I want to agree with Oliver mm -hmm. that this requires a multifaceted uh, rethinking of, of the way we, we think about education and about funding. Um, I, I wouldn't focus so much on the fund itself, where the, the money is coming from. I think the problem is the way we think about education and the way we are managing public funds. Because we are, we are losing a lot of public funds in other areas, and that is why we don't have enough money for universities. So even if you create a, a university fund and there's no money going into the fund because we are looting elsewhere, then there's a problem. So we have a serious problem of economic management, and we Kenyans have to start seeing that when we lose money in one sector, it affects education. Uh -huh. You know, we just look at it in terms of who is the crook and how much money are they going home with, but we have to start thinking what is the impact of this theft of public funds and wastage on the economy, and the, one of the things that suffers most uh -huh. is education. And then we also have to have a complete overhaul of our, of our approach to education. For example, if you want people to do research, then we have to start 
honoring people who do research. We are, we are just uh, still mourning the, the loss of, uh, of Professor Juma. But he was in Harvard, and it is unlikely that he would have got as far as he did in Harvard if he was here in Kenya, because there are so many frustrations and obstacles to lecturers making a name for themselves. I've just mentioned, if you get research funding, you can barely access it. You have huge classes. And even if you do something major, the people who get the head of state recommend, or commendations are not, are not lecturers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's no joy or, or social reward or satisfaction in contributing to society through knowledge because the people who get rewarded are, are the people who are rich and who, sorry to say, are usually crooks. So until we start valuing contributions to society that have nothing to do with money, then we are going to keep on seeing more and more conversations about money from the lecturers. But I also need to say that, unfortunately, um, we are only hearing Every time the media talks to the lecturers, they are talking to them about union matters. Mm -hmm. And of course, mm -hmm. unions are fighting for, for, for working conditions, which is, which is fair. But let's have national conversations about why the universities are not doing what they should do and not focus so much on pay. It's a big issue, but it's not the only issue that is affecting higher education in Kenya. All right. Um, let me come to you, um, Kip Chimba. We've had a lot of complaints, especially from uh, the corporate world, that half-baked graduates are uh, being released out into the job market. But even from the university admission level of lecturers saying the kind of students we're admitting into university have all these A's being celebrated on national television, but those A's don't necessarily translate into um, output and productivity. When these students come to school, most of them cannot write um, proper English. Most of them cannot speak uh, proper English. Where are we going wrong in that? Uh, you know, you, because that, that has again watered down the quality of education in the country. I think, Michelle, the first thing we must look at is we must understand that where did we lose it? It is not at the university level. There must have been problems which began somewhere, which have been transferred over time to now the end product being the corporate world, which is the consumer mm -hmm. at the tail end. We must understand that, first of all, do we have the basics about education? Mm -hmm. We have institutionalized poor standards from our teachers' training institu institutions in this country. When you train a teacher, look at most of where those P1 teacher institutions are located. Others are in a, in a second floor building somewhere. Do we expect a teacher who is wholesome to come from there? I don't think so. We need to invest for, in education across the board. We cannot come here and, and say we'll invest in education from the point of view from the university level mm -hmm. because these are things that have been carried on from from as far as primary school. Correct. And I'm happy that we are having reforms in terms of curricula. But what we must now reform is we must now promote competence-based education and which honor practical skills. Whereby, if somebody is good in doing masonry, don't take them all the way to university to study journalism. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, why do we allow our universities to invest in lecturing in, in churning out diplomas. I think that one should be a core business in Tibet. Mm -hmm. And we allow universities to concentrate solely on degrees, masters, and all, and purely higher education. Mm -hmm. So that at the end of the day, university focuses only on producing and producing people who society needs. Right. The other thing will be this. Why should we blame the university? We need to blame each person. The, the, the blame lies individually to the people who are education stakeholders. Uh -huh. In this sense, the corporate should also play its role. We should have internship programs. We should have extension programs, whereby if today I'm studying law, I should take my extension program with the courts and the judiciary seriously, uh -huh. so that I learn. The learning process becomes both practical and theoretical. Uh -huh. But what we see now is that we have concentrated so much in cramming and just passing exams, so that we end up having somebody who has a first class degree, but they cannot pronounce or they cannot describe who they are. So we end up having a, a nation whereby we have very good papers, 
but not good brains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's an interesting point Oliver brings up, uh, basically uh, drawing the line between the, 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 the gains from universities and the gains from TVET or the place of TVET um, in higher learning. Let me come to you, Dr. Wendia, in terms of uh, many times uh, TVET and technical colleges uh, have, uh, have been regarded or perceived as, uh, you know, for kazi amkono, and many really don't want to go to technical colleges, and so most of them would rather go through parallel courses um, in, in universities to access whatever course they that is, and like you mentioned earlier, parallel causes is how universities began making money mm -hmm. um, after receiving less funding. But now, um, the Ministry of Education says universities must declare and send all funds from parallel causes to the national treasury. Um, is that a good move in terms of increasing funding um, and the management of this funding for these universities? Let me first back up a little bit and talk about, I think corporate sector, unfortunately, is part of the problem. But that points to an even bigger problem, which is our philosophy of education. Once we educate for the market, and this is what I've been saying, once you tell people that you're educating for the market, they have no incentive to learn. Mm -hmm. So people don't invest in learning skills, they invest in having the certificates. And it starts from primary school. In primary, you learn for the exam, you pass. In secondary, you learn for the exam, you pass. In campus, now you learn for, for getting a job. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you should see a, a university classroom. Students do not listen if they cannot see where where what you're telling them is going to get them a job. And the problem is they, they, don't, they, they think that all that matters is that I get a certificate and get a job. So when you try to tell them, no, invest in the skill first, listen to what I'm saying, learn this, they can't learn because they are, they, are, they are busy focusing on the job. So we need to change our philosophy of education and put the learner in the middle of the learning process. Mm -hmm. We cannot keep on telling them it's about a job, it's about exam, it's about someone else. That's basically what we are saying. We're taking you to school for somebody else. Right. We have to also tell students, you are going to school for you, to get skills for you. Because if we don't do that and we keep talking about the market, the market, the market, then you get the certificates, the employers get the certificates they want, but not the skills mm -hmm. that they want. Mm -hmm. So we must stop this language of, of market. It's, it's destroying education. So coming to TVET, the reason why people want to go to Tibet is because the market is skewed. Again, the market, it is skewed towards management jobs. So in fact, you see, for example, right now, Kenyatta National Hospital is in problems, mm -hmm. and the, head, the CEO is not a doctor. So this is what we are seeing in so many uh, institutions where the, the management are not professionals in the field of the services that are being given. And that is very discouraging to people. So now people say, why do medicine? Let me go do MBA and become a manager. Uh -huh. And so people are not becoming better at their skills. They are deciding, let me become a manager. And so Tibet is, is, is falling in the same problem because what's the point of me being a good welder, a good carpenter, if I'm going to work for a company and never rise to, through the ranks? Mm -hmm. Because somebody with a become who doesn't know how to hold a hammer and a, who can't hammer a nail in has to give me the orders on what to do. So we need a revision of the labor market. And I'm just so sad to not hear anything from the labor CS, because she should be the one telling us how we can revise the labor market so that professionals and technicians, now the plumbers and the, and the carpenters that we are crying about, mm -hmm. so that they can see future prospects. And then that is where unions come in, because unions also get better pay for these technicians. As long as there are no job prospects, no social recognition for somebody with technical skills. People will want to become managers and they will all go to business schools. All right, all right. Like we mentioned earlier, it is a multifaceted approach. Um, it is uh, now about uh, 15 minutes to 8 a.m. We'd like to invite you at home to take part in this conversation. Our numbers are on the screen. You can call in and give us your thoughts and comments and ask questions to our panelists here in the studio. You can also tweet us via the hashtag Morning Express KTN. You can tweet me directly at Michelle Ngele will be something, some of your thoughts and comments on uh, the reforms in the higher learning sector in the country. Uh, let me come to you, Oliver. 
Again, with the reforms we've seen in the education sector, only about 10% of those who sit for KCSC now, uh, over the past two years at least, have been able to make it to university, leaving the other 90% um, you know, to go to colleges and again, uh, the possibility of TVET. Uh, would that perhaps increase the need for the government to further, um, what would it, revamp uh, technical colleges in the country to make them more alluring to the youth? I think the problem does not lie with revamping alone. Mm -hmm. We need to deal with our entire perception issue that has been institutionalized in Kenyans to the extent that if I do not have a degree, I am not worth of being mentioned anywhere. Mm -hmm. The problem is here. We enact laws that even for anybody to get to a political office, they must have a degree. What are we doing to those TVET institutions? We are telling them you are second grade people, your qualification do not count in the table of leadership. Mm -hmm. That is where we need to begin from, by getting it right. We need to recognize these people that if you have a, your place as a person who, or as a diploma holder is guaranteed in society. Not that tomorrow you are told, no, look here, you need a degree to do this, because it begins from those basics. When we get that right, we ask ourselves, whom do we need? Do we need masons? Do we need carpenters? Do we need engineers? Mm -hmm. We go back and train. And if you look at the TVET institutions we have in this country, they are well, they have the machines, they have the laboratories. Talking about them, look at, for example, a polytechnic. Right. A graduate or a diploma holder from a polytechnic, they, the skills in them, and the market will appreciate such a people. And you look at what is the amount of training happening in those institutions. So I think we should go to the level whereby we have at least two or three TVET institutions at county levels. Mm -hmm. This will help us in transitioning these huge numbers. Because if we today say all the people who want to access TVET institutions must come to Nairobi Poly or Eldoret Polytechnic, Rift Valley Technical Training, mm -hmm. we need to devolutionize the whole thing so that in each county, at least we have two or three TVET institutions so that we, it can help in issues of transition. And now we move to doing a public awareness or a campaign to deal with the perception mm -hmm. that joining TVET is second grade. Right. That is where we'll begin from. All right. Um, let's hear in from a caller. Uh, we have Samuel calling in from High Rise. Samuel, many thanks for calling. To your question or comment, please. Um, I went through the old education system. Right. And uh, it was a better education system than whatever Matangi tried to bring. Mm -hmm. I started from uh, at Mazera uh, Primary. Right. I went to... I missed secondary. Mm -hmm. I went to Kenyatta High School for five or six. I went to the Nairobi University. I majored in physics. That education system was better than whatever these people are trying to bring. Right. Actually, the old education system was saving, was saving the citizens of this country. After class seven, they know where they are going. After form four, they know where they are going. After from, from, from five and six, after from five and six, they know where they are going. Those who are finished from six, they know what they will do. We used to have technical institutions which are being stolen into universities. That's not the right way. Our physics, our budget, I've worked in the government for 33 years. I retired in 2015. It's a pity. Whatever is going on, I'm very sad about Kenya. We have lost it. All the right. old education system mm -hmm. used to actually, there, there is a vision. The mathematics that we did that time was taking you towards the digital age. Today, if you ask Professor Abukangi, Bajagi himself, what is digital? He cannot even reply himself. What is digital? Even to yourself as a, as a customer, what is digital? I'm a physicist myself, and I said I went through the education system, and the mathematics of that time had choices, about six choices, papers, which were leading you towards, and it was giving you a direction. And you know, if you look at uh, even the technology that you're talking about, we used to have valve TVs. 
From Valve TVs, we came to transistor TVs. From just transistor TVs, when they were being introduced, some of us, I was going to the University of Nairobi. I did that, uh, what, what do you call electronics. Okay? And then right. I saw the transition from the valves to the transistor, from the transistor to the ICs, from the ICs to whatever we have. And today, the, the circuits are still the same. I'm uh, a scientist. All right, all Science right, Samuel. Science will never change. Science is the same. We all try right. to miniaturize. We miniaturize this thing. When I was leaving the, the ministry, I worked from the Ministry of Transport and Infrastructure as a physicist. Actually, we had a better education system than what these people are trying to bring us. All right, Samuel. Samuel, we, we, we get the point, Samuel. Many thanks for calling in this morning. Um, that is uh, Samuel uh, calling in from uh, High Rise. And uh, interesting points there Samuel brings in. He says he went through the old system and it was much better, according to him, than uh, what uh, Matiangi is trying to bring in. What I, 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 I captured from that, he says, in the old system, you knew exactly where you were going after you finished class seven. You knew where you were going. After you finished from four, from six, you knew what you were going to do. Um, education CS Fred Matiangi here says, when we sat down and developed to Vision 2030, we should have spent more time asking what education and skills we need to achieve it. Um, and, and he says, you know, once again, we want the training of students who are responsive to our needs, considering that our needs are constantly changing. So perhaps, um, Dr. Wendia, what, the, what does the education system need to be geared towards now? What kind of skills do we need to be churning out now that would be in tandem with Vision 2030? Actually, I've been saying for the last few months that that is the wrong question. Vision 2030 is very limited. All right. It's looking at Kenya as a business. And so it is not considering other, uh, other aspects of Kenya where we need skills. I mean, it's OK if we, we, we train students for Vision 2030, but not all the students will be able to fit in that vision because it's very market and employment oriented. And we need, we need innovation. And that is not catered for in Vision 2030. And actually, I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite um, uncomfortable with Vision 2030. But let me just say, and, and listening to Samuel, I was also in the old system. And I think that is what under the bridge. But also, the old system worked if you were able to make it. Very many people were not able to get from five and six places and were not able to go to the university. And, and that is what we are trying to avoid. And, and we, can't, we can't continue with that system. And incidentally, actually, the new system is trying to introduce the same thing of having people decide in high school mm -hmm. where they are going to be and continue like that. But the workplace is, is evolving so rapidly, you cannot train people today for jobs in 10 years because you don't know whether those jobs we'll will be there. be there. So what we need to do is to tr give people skills and uh, allow them to be innovative and allow them to cre be creative and create the environment for that kind of thing. Like, for example, look at patenting. Uh, p young people are creating things already, actually. They're already inventing things. They can't get them patented because the laws are so crazy. They need to pay 200000 to a lawyer to get to start the process. So how are they supposed to innovate anything? And in fact, a lot of young people are saying that their ideas have been taken by others who have the money to invest. Uh -huh. So those are the things we need to be, be looking at. We also need to look at when it comes to craftspeople and TVET. In Europe, you go to Europe and the first thing you're told is who, which, which was the best painter, you know, the craftsman. I went to the US once and, and they were showing us a wielder who mm -hmm. is known in, in, in the town for the kind of wielding that he has done. Do we recognize carpenters, painters, fashion designers? We have great fashion designers? Have we helped them streamline the industry? You know, these are the things we should be talking about. And in fact, actually, the problems Matiangi is trying to solve are not his problems. Those are the problems of the labor CS and the commerce CS. And they should be, she should be improving 
the terms or, and conditions so that people can be able to invent and earn a living All from right. their craft. All right. Um, let's pause it there for a moment. Uh, it is an interesting conversation on education reforms in the country. At this point, we'd like to release our viewers watching us on our KTN Home channel. Many thanks for watching. Life and Style is uh, coming up next. But for those who do want to keep up with this conversation, it continues right now exclusively on KTN News. Dr. Wandia Njoya is an education expert. All right, and we also have a caller this morning, Alex, calling in from uh, Isiolo. Alex, many thanks for calling. To your question or comment, please. Uh, thank you very much indeed. And I would like to comment on something which has been very serious about in education, where I know of a, of a young man who did not do very well in his Form 4, but then when he, he decided to do a foundation course of, uh, in, in the University of Nairobi, of, uh, in, he did... Uh, he, he, he did a certificate in human resources, then went ahead, he, he decided that that was not the best for him, so he went, he, he decided to do a certificate in architecture in Kisumu Technical University, Technical University now. And from there he came to Technical University of Kenya, where he did his uh, uh, diploma in, uh, in architecture. Now, he has been refused, even after doing his foundation, because he has been refused to take up a degree course in the University of Nairobi, the uh, form, four, uh, form four grade, because he did not achieve a C plus. What I'm, uh, currently, he has been working for the last two and a half years in a place in a in, in a private institution where he, as as we know now, he is doing about the best. He's about the best in uh, in architecture. That guy, he's a young man. He has been refused to do his uh, his, his degree uh, by by Matiani, by the by the current system, and because and this guy has done all his foundation through across all the the, the tertiary in, institutions to achieve his degree, so that he he would have moved forward because that is what he wanted to do, to do it. No, why really? This has to happen this way. We are un unable to find, to get to Matiani for the last two years. And it is very, uh, very interesting that it is very impossible to get to the Minister of Education. A, a, a small man, people, small people like us, is not possible. Not even writing, they don't, they don't, they don't even, they don't even answer. They will never reply. They will never do anything. So people, this is what we are talking to now, me too, because we don't know the truth. When they say that you can do some foundation course, and then that foundation course will find you, and then you do the degree course. I mean, the, you go through a tertiary institution. You go through a. Uh, so that when one you are passed, you can go to the university and do what you uh, want, uh, because that is passion. Then all you right. find the people. Yeah. So we are very unhappy, by the way. All right, Tell all Matiangi right. that he should come out and be seen by uh, small people. It, right. it is not possible to find. It. They don't even reply letters. Sa sa. Asante sana, Alex. Uh, we we, we yes. get the point, Alex. All right, many thanks. Uh, that is uh, Alex uh, calling in from uh, Isiolo. And it, it is an important point he's raised there. We don't have too much time, but let's address that because many have been told you can go through a technical college and then further your education, eventually get a degree if you really want to get one. Why is it that this young man Alex is describing could not? I completely hear Alex. I'm telling you that that is just wrong. I'm sorry, it is wrong. An education system for a country is supposed to be flexible mm -hmm. to the citizens. If students don't make it in KCSE, we should allow for other ways in which they can enter the system. This rigidity of saying that there's only one way you can enter the job market through KCSC and through university, it's not fair. And people do exams when they're, what, 16. Are we going to hold them up to when they are 75 for decisions they made when they, for, for performance at 16? It's just not right. And in fact, one of the things I've been saying is we need to reform the way we think about exams. Mm -hmm. We should have entry exams at different levels and repeatedly so that people can, can try again. And that's the country we want. The country we want is to give opportunities to everybody. How can a young man try so hard and we, he keeps being shut down? It's not right. right. So we need a flexible education system. We need to, to make 
other opportunities besides KCSC for advancing in the education system. And unfortunately, even with this curriculum, it is still a government-centric. Uh, so it means that you still have to go through school in a certain way to, to get to a certain place. But let's have flexibility. Mm -hmm. Let people learn through internship. Let's have certification for internship. There are so many things we can do other than taking people through a pipeline. All right. Um, uh, uh, let me get your final comments on this, um, Kipchumba. Even as reforms continue being instituted in, the, um, higher, learning, uh, in, in higher learning, what else would you like to see? I think as long as we reform the higher learning to to focus it on exams, we are getting it wrong. Mm -hmm. And what we need to learn or ought to have learned from, let's say, America or any other industrialized country, is that we should not focus on employability or employment. Anytime you introduce employment on education, we miss the point. The point should be focused on innovation. This is what innovation will cure. The unemployment rate in this country is alarming. Alarming for the simple reason that we have the wrong education system in place. Education system that produces people whose sole duty is to be employed. It should be the other way around. We should venture so much in innovation such that if today I graduate from the university and I, I cannot find employment, what I can do is that I can create jobs. That is why we have the Silicon Valley in America. We have the best students, are innovators. They end up there, they build the best companies and employ people. Right. But our system, where if everything is being digitalized, if we do not think in that direction, we will be missing the point. Mm -hmm. Who will employ millions of these people who are being churned from the university each day? The other thing is that we need to see the labor ministry taking its position telling us in 10 years time, these are the jobs we will need so that our training is centered on something. We know that in 10 years time, Kenya will need 10,000 doctors. Mm -hmm. We prepare ourselves. In 10 years time, Kenya will need 500 architects. Right. We prepare ourselves. It should be informed by statistics and not by grades. All right. Whereby if you get an A, you are a doctor. If you get this, it means that we are not focusing on anything. Okay. We keep on churning the same thing and expecting different results. I think we are going nowhere. All right. Um, very briefly, Dr. Andy, I understand you have a closing comment. Very briefly. Yes. Unemployment is not solely an education problem. It's an economic, political, social. There are so many facets of the unemployment problem. Mm -hmm. And I think we are putting too much emphasis on education. Mm -hmm. All right, many thanks. Um, That's a good point to end it on. Um, it is a conversation that needs so much more time uh, to continue, but many thanks for joining us here on Morning Express. Dr. Wendy Njoya is an education expert and lecturer at the Daystar University. We've also had Oliver Kipchumba here in the studio, who is a lawyer and an analyst discussing education reforms instituted by the Ministry of Education. That conversation brings us a short break here on Morning Express. Do stay with us. Still more stories making headlines to come on the other side. <laughs>